Well, hello there, I'm Barrett Wilson with Guitar Tricks. In this video, I'm gonna show you three beginner licks to get you moving with rockabilly. We're gonna start with a lick that's more rhythmic and rooted in rock and roll and rhythm and blues. Then we're gonna progress to a more jazzy Western swing lick that can be played with each of the one, four, and five blues chords. And then we'll finish with a pentatonic lick that blends both major and minor pentatonic flavors is super easy to see on the fretboard. But first, real quick, if you want to learn all about rockabilly guitar, go to guitartricks.com forward slash rockabilly licks. There you're gonna find a bunch of incredible lick lessons that cover techniques like swing rhythm, rhythm patterns, 12 bar blues, tone, and much more. Okay, let's jump into our first lick. This is a lick that's gonna be played over E blues. Our progression here is gonna be two bars, of an E7, two bars of A7, back to two bars of E7, and then we've got our five chord B7. All right, so let's first hear what our lick sounds like. I've already pre-recorded a little rhythm loop here, so let's give it a shot. All right, so let's get into it and cover which frets we're playing. Now, what I want you to do is take your pinky to the 12th fret of the B string and your ring finger to the 12th fret of the G string. So we're playing a double stop here. Now this is a major third interval and thirds are really great in rockabilly. There's lots of stuff that you can do with thirds. Now with your other fingers, I wanna take your index and your middle, mostly your index here, lay it across the rest of the strings and mute them. So we've got a nice mute on the low E, the A, and the D strings, and then also that high E. And then when we fret those two notes, those should be the only notes ringing out. Everything else should be nice and muted. Now what this allows us to do when we're picking with our rhythm hand, we can dig in a little bit more. We don't have to necessarily worry about just hitting those two strings. So this can give us uh, the ability to have a nice punchy attack, a great staccato feel. Okay, let's cover the rhythm. So we're coming in beat one with a quarter note, but it's gonna be staccato, so really quick. So just beat one just like that. And then we're gonna swing the next one coming in on the and of beat two. Now to keep the same texture, let's still keep a down strum. So we'll go one and two and. Now when we're swinging, the upbeats or the ands, they're gonna be pushed a little bit. So we're gonna delay them. When we count it, it's one and two and three and four. So one and two and three, and four. Okay, so that's basically all of our lick. Now this is a two bar phrase. We're gonna switch it up a little bit in the second bar. What we're gonna do on beat one, instead of just playing the single strum, we're gonna slide into it from the 11th fret. Like that. Now what I'm doing, start, I'm moving to the 11th fret, and I'm sliding into it from one strum attack, one pick attack. And we're playing a swung eighth note rhythm here as well. So one and, okay? Now be sure to lift up on that fret hand, get the mute right, and then we're coming right back on the and of two, swinging that rhythm as well. So one and two and. Okay, for both of these bars, remember to keep that second eighth note rhythm also short and punchy staccato. Let's count through both of these bars. It's gonna sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so that's it. As long as you're muting those strings and you're squeezing down on that double stop with your ring and your pinky, you've got the rhythms down, you got the swing down, this is gonna sound great. Let's try it over our loop. I'll get it going. Here we go, moving to A7. Three, four, back to the one chord. 
Now the five, get ready. Two, one, two, three, four. The last thing I'll say about this first lick, now these chord stabs, as they're sometimes called, they're great for rhythm and they're also great for lead. It can be a really great thing to play at the height of a solo at its most highest dynamic, but also when you're just playing rhythm guitar behind a singer, great thing to add a little bit quieter. So if we've got E7 and we're going to A7, E7, B7. Same rhythms, same approach. We're just kind of backing off the volume, maybe playing lower on the fretboard. Good thing to do behind a singer. All right, now real quick, if you could go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel. Also in the description of the video, you'll find a link that'll take you to a free trial of guitar tricks. Why not go ahead and do it? Okay, for our second lick, we're gonna take a more jazzy Western swing approach. Here's what it sounds like over the same progression. Two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, so what we're doing here is we're playing a chromatic lick. It's all happening on one string per chord, and we're just moving to a different string depending on the chord we're on. Okay, so let's go over our frets here. Now we're starting on the D string, the sixth fret, and I want you to start with your index finger. We're gonna walk up one finger per fret at a time. That's the fun thing about this riff. So we'll go six, to seven, to eight, to nine. And that's index, middle, ring, pinky. We're also swinging this rhythm. So one and two and, or down, up, down, up. And those are swung eighth notes and then we're gonna rest for two beats. So if it's one bar, we get one and two and three, Four. Again, one and two and three, four. Now how this works over our E7, this is the dominant chord, the one chord in our E blues. We're starting on the major third. There it is. We're starting on the major third and chromatically walking up to the fifth. Da. To the fifth. Da. And those two notes between it are chromatic notes. Da, 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 da. So you can hear some tension and resolve. Right there. And that's kind of what makes this lick work. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing over the four chord, the A chord, starting on the major third of that chord and walking up to the fifth of that chord. We go back to our one chord and then do the same thing over our five chord, the B7 chord. So here's our B root, but we play. So that's the A string walking up six, seven, eight, nine. Also, if I wasn't clear on that G string over A7, six, seven, eight, nine, all the same thing there. So our one chord E, we are on the D string. Our four chord A, we play it on the G string. Our five chord, we play it on the A string. Okay, that's the lick. Let's try it now over our progression. Here we go, I'm gonna start us off. Here's our four chord. Two, two, three, four, one chord. One, two, three, four, five chord. Here we go, and one and two man, one and two man, four chord, one chord, five chord. Let's go again.
Okay, so you get the picture there. This is a very fun one. Now, the other thing you can do is find other spots of the neck where you can play this exact same lick. So we started on G sharp over E. Now there's a G sharp over here on the G string fret one. Now because of the tuning, when you move to the A chord on the B string, we have to go up one fret. So start one fret higher. Back to our E. And then over B7, you just move to the D string. Okay? You can also try this up here. So there's a G sharp here, walk it up. One fret at a time. And then here is our A chord, walking from C sharp up to E. Back to our E chord. And then over the B chord, we have to start here on D sharp. So we have because of that tuning, when we move to the G string, we have to go down a fret. That's always what trips us up when we're learning guitar is that that different tuning from the G string to the B string than all the other strings. Okay? So go ahead and experiment with playing it on different spots of the neck as well. Okay, now we're at our last and third lick here for this video. We're gonna play a pentatonic lick over just an E7 blues vamp. Let's hear it first. Okay, so let's get into our frets and fingers. So the fun thing about this is it's all gonna be 14 fret to 12th fret. Starting on the high E string, we're gonna use our ring finger and our index finger for this entire riff. So it's gonna go 14 to 12. Same thing on the B string, 14 to 12. 14 to 12 on the G string. And you guessed it, 14 to 12 on D. Okay, now from here, we're gonna pivot this index finger back to the 12th fret of G and have a little half step bend here. Now let's cover the rhythms. Everything's gonna be a quarter note for the most part. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Once we get to the 12th fret of D, we're gonna play an eighth note. And then on the end of beat four, pivot over to that 12th fret of G and do the bend. So it's a four and, okay? Let me count the, out the whole thing. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Now if that last eighth note little part there is a little bit too hard, just play everything as quarter notes. So one, Two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one. Still works. The eighth note thing just gives it a little bit more punch to it. Okay, so the fun thing about this riff is it combines both major pentatonic and minor pentatonic. So the first part on the high E and the B strings, this is sort of a major pentatonic sound. And then once you get to the G and D strings, it turns minor. Major. Little brighter. Minor. Okay, so that's a fun thing about it. And it's really cool because it just stays the same. Two notes per string. And 14 to 12, you can't go wrong. It's a beautiful little grid, and it's really fun to even play around with in a different order. So one thing you could do is experiment with different combinations. Something like that you could really have fun with. Okay, let's go ahead and try this together. Get our loop going. Here we go, one, two, try it with me. Do that again, here we go. Let's do all quarter notes. Now you can even play around with the rhythms, add a little bit extra picking in there if you want. Whatever, have fun with it. 
All right, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope these licks get you well on your way. Go ahead and leave a comment and let me know how you like them, if they're working out for you. Happy guitar playing, and as usual, we'll see you soon.